Hi, it's Mark from Top Local Lead Generation. We're here with award-winning mechanic and uh, car repair and maintenance expert extraordinaire, Mr. Bernie Pollock in Vancouver, BC. How are you doing tonight, Bernie? Excellent, Mark. How are you? I'm good. So good. we're going to talk about Mercs, about Mercedes. Uh, you've worked on them for quite a while. Tell us about them. Yeah, we, we've serviced Mercedes for a number of years. Uh, they've always been excellent cars. I mean, personally, I haven't really cared much for them up until around the 2000 model years came out, though. So why is that? Well, prior to around two th the 2000s, they were kind of a... Uh, Mercedes cars had some strange quirks. I mean, they're great cars, but they had, like, some strange things like the gas pedal linkages had a lot of extra play, so you have to push the gas pedal kind of extra hard before the car would move. Uh, the cars were kind of floaty riding, big steering wheels, kind of like bus-like, kind of boaty cars. Luxurious and good, but kind of boaty. Um, things changed. It, you know, Mercedes became kind of a tight car, responsive. They became a lot more fun to drive. Also, around that time, uh, they changed their fuel injection system. For a long time, they used the, the uh, Bosch K-Jetronic as like a continuous fuel injection system. It worked good when it's new, but... Uh, it's kind of a semi-mechanical system and had a lot of problems. Tough to diagnose, um, you know, expensive to repair. So now they've gone to electronic fuel injection. Way, way simpler to diagnose, way more reliable, better to repair. So you didn't really like those cars that much, but were they pretty good cars? Oh, absolutely. Uh, Mercedes, they've always been well-built cars. And cars that last a long time. Uh, you know, we rarely ever see an engine or, a, you know, like a major component like transmission or rear end ever go wrong on a Mercedes. They seem to last almost forever. So I, I know that people, I've always had this impression about them. They're so unique and different that they should probably only be serviced at the dealer. Is that true? No, absolutely not. Um, you know, while they are somewhat unique, any shop that's got uh, proper equipment and skilled technicians can service a Mercedes and, and do them well. Uh, for instance, we recently purchased uh, a dealer level scan tool uh, for our shop and it's got amazing support. You know, if we run into some tricky issue where we're not sure what we're reading or the problem is too complicated, we can actually download the data files from our scan tool, send them off to the, uh, the offices of this company. They have like, dedicated technicians, they analyze it and they can tell us, hey, this is a problem. So, so we have that dealer level service that we can do. You know, we're not the only shop that has that, but there's not that many that have it. It's a bit, pretty big investment. Yeah. So what what do you end up having to fix on these cars? Well, on, on most modern Mercedes, um, you know, the ones built within the last 15 years, uh, we do a lot of brakes and routine maintenance, oil changes and inspections. Um, check engine lamp diagnosis is another common issue and repairs related to that. Um, the thing with Mercedes, they're also very advanced. They're very electronic, and they do have some issues with their electronics, certain modules going bad, you know, electrical items. So... There's a few more of those things to fix than, than your average car. So what what kind of what's different about Mercedes maintenance service? Well, I mean their maintenance services are pretty much like any other car, but they have a maintenance reminder system that'll come up on the dash. I, again, not unique to Mercedes, but but the way they do theirs is a little different. They have like generally there's an A service and a B service. Sometimes there'll also be a C, D, and an E, but mostly it's an A service and a B service. So the A service is basically an oil change and a light maintenance inspection, whereas the B service is uh, the oil change with a uh, full comprehensive inspection and maintenance service. And generally, you know, you do an A service, then a B, and an A and a B. Um, the uh, other thing about Mercedes, like a lot of their other German cars these days, they have very long oil change intervals. I mean, personally, I think they're almost too long. Some of them are up to 24,000 kilometers between oil changes. Um, you know, when we change oil that old, I mean, why I say it's too long, when we change oil that's that old, it really smells bad and it, it just looks horrible. So, I mean, I think at that point it's really pretty too much, too far contaminated to be used. But anyways, that's what they recommend. Um, but I'd say, you know, if, if you have a 24,000 kilometer oil change in interval, you should change the oil you know, a few thousand kilometers sooner, maybe 20 or a little sooner. So why would they have such long service intervals? Well, there's a couple things. Uh, I think one, from a marketing perspective, uh, when the salesman or, or woman is uh, showing the car in the showroom, they can brag to the uh, 
prospective client that, hey, you know, look at this car. It's great. You know, you buy it. It's expensive, but you don't have to change the oil very often. You know, you don't, you don't have to come in for service all that often. The car is going to tell you when it needs to be serviced. Um, and when you think about it, I mean, a lot of people who buy those cars new, they'll just lease it for a short-term period, maybe three or four years. So for them, you know, if they only drive 60 or 80,000 kilometers, they might only need three or four services, which is kind of a nice sales feature. Um, I mean, on a, on a positive note, environmentally, it's a good thing to have a longer oil change interval because you don't need to produce as much oil, you don't need to use as much oil, waste as much oil, and uh, recycle it. Uh, so it, it's better that way. So how do they get away with such long intervals? Do you think it's okay? Well, um, the way they get away with it is um, they use special synthetic oils uh, and, and special long-life oil filters. Uh, all of which we use, by the way, when we do a Mercedes service. Uh, the oil capacity on these engines is also quite large, like seven to eight liters, whereas like an average V6 to V8 engine traditionally is taking four to five liters of oil. So you've got more oil that can be, you know, which takes longer to get dirty. Um, as I said earlier, I think 24,000 kilometers is too long. You know, and the oil is severely contaminated by that time. But I don't think the manufacturer, if it was really that serious of an issue, they wouldn't recommend it because obviously they wouldn't want their engines to be destroyed in a short period of time. But I mean, they'll that'll at least satisfy the warranty period and, and perhaps a little longer. But given a lot longer, like you know, 150, 200, 250 thousand kilometers, it's hard to know what's going to happen. Um, yeah, I mean. Long oil changes are a good thing, but just don't go the full length. That's my feeling on it. So what else is great about Mercs? Well, in the North American market, uh, we get all the medium to high-end models. And I think that's generally um, because it, they have to ship them from Europe. Uh, you know, they cost a lot of money to put a car on a ship. Plus, uh, you know, then ship. You know, if you're buying it in Vancouver, you got to ship it all the way across the country. So the freight costs are really high. So why not sell a high-end car where there's more value and they make more profit? Um, in Europe, there's uh, you know many lower-end Mercedes models available, things with wind-up windows and stuff that we don't really see here. Um, that being said, all Mercedes are high-quality cars, uh, and they're often innovative. And I've often noticed that, like, if you want to. If you want to know what kind of new technology you're going to see in a car that's mainstream in 10 years, just, just have a look at a high-end Mercedes model now. Um, just some things I can think about from the past. I mean, like 50 years ago, a lot of cars used DC direct current generators to charge the battery, which wasn't a very great system, but everyone used it. Alternators were cutting edge technology. Mercedes had them early. That, you know, Within 5, 10 years of Mercedes adopting it, everyone else had them. Um, another feature, like if you look back at Mercedes, some high-end Mercedes of 10 years ago, they had like a, a credit card key. Uh, that's, actually, that's actually the key. You can just walk up to the car, pull the door handle, the car opens, push a button, and the car starts. Well, nowadays, uh, lots of cars have that. It's, you know, even your average low-end models have that. So just look at what's new, fancy in a Mercedes, and that's what you're going to see in uh, five or 10 years' time in most other cars. So... I know in some ways you're, you've criticized Mercedes, but you're actually a Mercedes owner. So do you have any final thoughts about these cars? Well, well-built car. It's, uh, the one I have, it's fun to drive, nice quality. It, it, feels like a, you know, it feels like a great car to drive. I just get a lot of pleasure out of just driving it. So, And I think a lot of people who buy Mercedes feel the same way. Um, you know, generally, they're durable. The car is worth keeping for a long time. You know, repairs can be expensive for some items, and for, for other items, they're not so bad. Um, but like many other European cars, you know, they can depreciate very heavily, so uh, they can make a pretty good used car value um, if you don't mind paying a bit more for repairs in a Honda or Toyota. So those are my final thoughts. Great. Thanks, Bernie. So we've been talking with um, auto repair genius, Mr. Bernie Pollock, he's an award-winning, he has an award-winning business, uh, best auto service in Vancouver. They've won it 12 times so far, um, best auto repair in Vancouver, um, voted on by customers from a different couple different publications. You can reach them at pollockautomotive.com or give them a call, 604-327-7112. Thanks, Bernie. Thanks, Mark. We'll talk again soon.